Hi everybody, it's Terry Ryder from Hot Spooning, bringing you uh, my regular weekly feature at this time every week, Hot Spot of the Week. At the weekend, I was in uh, Canberra and then Sydney, speaking at, uh, firstly at a, a seminar in Canberra and then on Sunday at the Property Buy Expo at the International Convention Centre at Darling Harbour in Sydney. And uh, one of the, the main topics that I was speaking about in front of audiences there was about the markets that are expected to show growth moving forward, now that the two biggest city markets, uh, Sydney and Melbourne, are uh, inevitably winding down after their recent booms. One of the uh, topic cities was, was Brisbane. Brisbane has been predicted by many to have um, shown better growth by now. It hasn't really done a great deal. And one of the underlying reasons why Brisbane hasn't done what Sydney and, and Melbourne have done is that the underlying state economy has been much, much weaker. Uh, Sydney's uh, property boom evolved out of a very strong state economy and the same thing happened in Melbourne where the, the very, very strong Victorian economy and very strong population growth helped to precipitate the upcycle in the real estate market there. Meanwhile, the underlying economy um, for Brisbane, the Queensland state economy has been very mediocre, ranking very low on the, the list of the eight states and territories, ranking number six at the moment. There are signs of improvement um, in the state economy as the resources sector comes back and tourism is strong. Um, we're hoping that the infrastructure spending that was promised in the recent state budget, $50 billion over the next four years will happen because that's a major catalyst. That's one of the big things that drove uh, the improvement in the economy in Sydney and out of that came the, the real estate boom. So we're hoping that'll happen. There's also evidence that the population growth figures are starting to favour South East Queensland again. So there's some momentum building for Brisbane and, and vacancies are also coming down. And uh, so there's, a, there's hope that all of that, plus the, the affordability comparison between Brisbane and the two biggest cities and the yield comparison as well, will induce um, greater level of buying from uh, particularly from interstate investors. Now, if and when that happens, one of the areas that I expect to do pretty well is the Redcliffe Peninsula up in the north of Brisbane. About three months ago, um, at this time, doing uh, my week, weekly feature hotspot of the week, I focused on the Moreton Bay local government area. Well, Redcliffe Peninsula is actually part of that. Well, we have a, a separate report on the Redcliffe Peninsula because it's a little niche market um, all of its own and deserves its own report, we think. And partly that's because it is a peninsula within the local government area of Moreton Bay region. And uh, it's a market that um, that's evolving over time. Uh, traditionally, the Redcliffe Peninsula, I guess, has been a little bit stigmatised, has been down market. Uh, sea change for battlers, perhaps, has been part of the, um, the moniker attached to it. But... It's certainly, in more recent times, um, it's evolved as a market. It's been increasingly gentrified, that area. And what it presents now is um, a very appealing, affordable uh, waterside lifestyle, uh, which has taken on greater appeal since the completion of rail links linking that part of Brisbane to the centre of, to the centre of Brisbane. Uh, the Rika Peninsula for something like 50 years was promised rail links that were never delivered and finally recently they have been delivered so now people who live on the Redcliffe Peninsula can jump on a train and get to the centre of Brisbane if that's where they want to go. Not everybody lives there needs to go there because um, most of the people who live in this part of Brisbane don't work in the Brisbane CBD they, they work in jobs nodes locally or a little bit closer in the Brisbane CBD but that option now exists. So that's been a game changer for this part of um, the northern suburbs of Brisbane. So the Moreton Bay local government area, it's, one of, it's the third largest local government area in Australia, apparently. Uh, that's partly because uh, Brisbane's a little bit unusual. The whole Brisbane metropolitan area is divided into just five local government areas and Moreton Bay region is the one that covers the um, mostly affordable suburbs on the, the northern outer fringes of the Brisbane metropolitan area. Um, <clears throat> the Moreton Bay region has a population of over 400,000. It's projected to rise 
to about 650,000 um, over the next you know, 20 years or so. Um, the Redcliffe area itself has a population of about 60,000. Um, many of them commute outside the area to go to work. Um, some of them work locally. The local area has got many schools, a couple of hospitals, three marinas, and some major shopping centres. And then nearby you have very, very big jobs notes like the Australian Coast Precincts, which includes the domestic airport, international airport, and the seaport, not too far away. So plenty of jobs in the local area without having to go to the, the Brisbane CBD to work. Um, Redcliffe has um, evolved in recent times as a tourist destination. It's got 22 kilometres of beaches. It's got marinas. It's got uh, good fishing. It's got whale watching. You can jump on a boat and go out and watch whales at certain times of the year out of Redcliffe. Uh, it's got the historical Redcliffe Jetty, which has markets in the Settlement Cove Aquatic Park. And also, I forgot to mention that uh, Redcliffe is famous because it's where the, the Gibbs brothers, who formed the Bee Gees, that's where they grew up in this um, little seaside town as it was then. Um, lots of infrastructure evolution in recent times um, affecting this particular market. And a lot of it's been retail. Um, nearby, not far away from the Rico Peninsula, is the, the ongoing, evolving North Lakes master planned development, creating a new suburb. Uh, the Westfield Shopping Centre there has recently had a $140 million upgrade. Then we've had um, a $65 million shopping centre called Blue Water Square and uh, an $80 million upgrade of the nearby Kippering Shopping Village. We've all seen that, also seen an upgrade of the Redcliffe Hospital and uh, the creation of um, a facility called Azure Blue Age Care. So lots of things happening or recently happened in terms of developing ongoing development of the infrastructure in this particular market um, and that's created um, possibilities for the local property market the first thing that stands out about uh, the suburbs of the Redcliffe peninsula is is a relative affordability even though it's on a peninsula surrounded by water 22 kilometers of beaches etc um, most of the suburbs on the Redcliffe peninsula have median house prices in the mid 400,000 so you know, particularly by the standards of uh, Sydney and Melbourne, very, very affordable. Uh, suburbs like Clontarf, Kipper Ring, Margate, Redcliffe itself, and Woody Point, the medium house prices there are all in the 400,000s. It's just a couple of the local suburbs, Scarborough and, and Newport, which are higher. Newport is actually considerably high because it's kind of like a marina water um, can, canal based type residential area where the median price for houses is in the 800 thousands there's been uh, signs of uh, price growth in the last 12 months or so but um, like most of brisbane to date it's been quite moderate um, sort of four or five percent in the last 12 months in terms of the median price growth for most of those suburbs um, another thing that stands out for of this market is that the vacancy rates are much much lower than brisbane averages the brisbane average has been three three and a half percent for a while inflated by the high vacancy rates for inner city apartments in Brisbane. But this part of the Brisbane market, uh, the vacancy rates are uh, one, the postcodes is just 1.5%. Another one of the postcodes in the Redcliffe Peninsula area is 2%. So <clears throat> vacancy is low, uh, rental market quite strong, and most of the suburbs on the Redcliffe Peninsula have uh, median rental yields, sort of four and a half, you know, to 4.7 percent so pretty good rental yields um, and relatively affordable prices then there's quite a substantial unit market as well this sort of seaside environment um, there's been quite a bit of development in recent times the suburb of Rico that sell 160 apartment sales in the last 12 months at a, a median price of 415,000 so Again, very affordable, and the median rental yield for Redcliffe apartments is 4.6%. Um, then you've got Scarborough, um, a little bit more expensive, but the median price uh, in still below 500,000 for apartments there. Uh, Margate, <coughs> excuse me, 410,000. What do you point the median price for apartments? 435,000. So there's a quite an attractive level of affordability given that this is a, a peninsula. Uh, seaside environment 
uh, with the added bonus of the uh, the new rail links, which opened a couple of years ago, and uh, had been considered a bit of a game changer for this market. It's certainly uh, noticeable that there's been an uplift in um, um, the creation of both residential and commercial facilities in this area since the new rail link opened. And uh, we've seen you know, an ongoing development or renovations creating cafes and restaurants and bars and weekend markets and various residential projects because the, uh, the new rail link was considered to be a game changer for this area. Um, Stockland is, is very active in this area um, and it's got a plan for a, a $590 million project on the peninsula, um, including homes that will have uh, waterfront access. Um, as I mentioned, just down the road, you've got the North Lakes Master Plan Community, which is a work in progress that's been going on for many, many years and continues to evolve. Um, big retail offering there, as well as uh, private hospital, golf course, all those sorts of things. So within striking distance of the Rika Peninsula, lots of facilities and amenities within the uh, North, North Lakes development. And that all helps uh, lift the appeal of uh, what's available for people who live on the peninsula. Um, another thing that's coming up for that general area is a, a new university campus, the Moreton Bay Regional University Precinct, which is approved. They've got the site. They're soon going to start building it so we understand. And over the next, say, 10 or 12 years, it will gradually evolve and expand till, till we get to the point within about 12 years so they say there'll be about 10,000 students going there. So that's going to bring a lot of rental demand into the area. We've also got um, uh, Stockland um, has approval for the Newport Shopping Centre, which is going to create uh, 450 or 500 construction jobs. Uh, and then they've got their uh, Newport Scarborough ma master planned community with a total of 1,600 homes planned over time. Uh, allegedly, that's going to create 3,000 jobs. So quite a lot happening in the peninsula area. A lot of it's evolved since the, the new rail link came in. Uh, it's precipitated quite a bit of activity in terms of new developments and the creation of new lifestyle elements on the peninsula. What we haven't yet seen is really big growth in prices. We've seen some moderate growth. And uh, as I said earlier, if and when uh, the local economy improves as we expect it to, and all those factors such as population growth, infrastructure spending um, and improved economic performance in Queensland generally such to feed into the Brisbane property market, we're probably going to see this, this market grow. So um, if you want to find out more about the Redcliffe Peninsula market, we have this, um, where are we there? Allocation report, Redcliffe Peninsula, northern suburbs of Brisbane, um, one of many location reports we have on the hotspotting.com that our website you can access in and uh, those reports uh, sell for $55. Lots of detailed information and analysis are telling you why areas like this, the Redcliffe Peninsula, are worth considering as property investors looking for where we're going to find the future growth in uh, capital city Australia now that the two biggest city markets have uh, passed their peak and wound down. Um, I certainly believe that there's, there's plenty of growth options moving forward. It's not a case of... Um, Australia having one market and it's all moving into a downturn phase as uh, Sydney and Melbourne wind down. Other cities are starting to crank up. I uh, would include Canberra, Perth and Adelaide in that category. And uh, I'm still waiting for, for Brisbane to perform. And that's all very much dependent, I think, on the underlying state economy, as it is in every location around Australia. Okay, tomorrow night at this time will be our... Um, our special monthly feature. Hotspot of the week happens Tuesday evening every week, but once a month on a Wednesday evening, we do the live Q&A. We have got the opportunity to tune in and um, bang in your questions that will pop up on the screen in front of me, and I'll do my, my best to answer any of the questions that you throw at me. Um, most of them will probably be questions about location, as they usually are in the live Q&As every month. That's fine. I'll do my best. Um, but uh, tune in this time tomorrow night if you'd like to participate in that and have your opportunity to have your specific questions of interest answered in the live Q&A. That's it for now. Uh, hopefully we'll see you again this time tomorrow night.
Terry Ryder from Mott Spotting signing off. See you then. <laughs>